Good morning and welcome. Patriot Radio News Hour, Joe and Jason on this Thursday. I hope it finds you well. Uh, for all of you out there on the front range, be careful. Uh, the, the snow is starting to, to fall there. I know, a kind of a big event, maybe, may, maybe not. Uh, we may be spared from the worst of it up there, but uh, be careful out there when you're driving. Uh, let let the let the crazy ones uh, go a- end up in the ditch. Take your time. Uh, it's kind of nice. We need a. I'll take it. Snow, wa- any kind of water. Uh, we're, we're in for. Uh, but here in the Valley of the Sun, another great day as uh, uh, spring training. Right, we got a lot of tourists in town, and well, I'll be glad when they're gone. How about that? Eight hundred nine five one. Zero five nine two. That is our toll free number. Of course, the website is, if you didn't know, allamericangold.com. And uh, I want to start the show. There's an article out uh, about, you know, just cost of things. And today I was driving into work and uh, I got, uh, I caught the light. And right at the 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 light uh, is the the least expensive gas station, you know, in in the in the area where where my office is. Three ninety nine nine, so four dollar gas uh, back here in Arizona, and and it's going to get pricey. Uh, we've got gasoline things. Uh, we had CPI numbers out that were too hot today. We got producer price numbers that were really hot. Matter of fact, we got a lot of data to go over. Uh, but I'm going to just say uh, today, I would I would once again buy any little dip in gold and silver you can. Uh, Because it won't last. But this was out of California. One of the uh, Mission District's restaurants, uh, La Vaca Barreria. I guess is pretty famous. I don't know. But uh, they they claim to be anyway. Uh, It is, uh, they've operated out of a former record store in Mission. He was selling his burritos for $11. Before COVID, uh, he was talking about prices and what things cost. His burritos now are $22. So they've doubled. And he goes on to say, before COVID, a sack of onions, was like nine dollars. I used to just go and pick them up at the restaurant depot. During COVID, it was forty dollars. Now they're eighty dollars. And uh, he's like, "Hey, listen, I'm not at twenty-two dollars. I'm not making any more money than I did at eleven. But here was why I brought this story up. Not because, uh, like, all of us get it, right? Everything's more expensive. The article goes on to say, well, yeah, part of the reason why, Jason, it's $22 is he's decided that he doesn't want to buy the cheaper cuts of meat. In other words, he could have sacrificed the quality. If he could just buy lesser quality beef, then his, you know, he could have maybe got away with sixteen dollars. So you know, there you go. So, so this is really, I think, what the Federal Reserve has forced all of us into. Unless you have enough money, right? Hey, if you got plenty of money. You don't really care about inflation, but the vast majority of Americans, this is the decision, right? Can I afford? The same quality and pay $22, or should I just buy something that isn't the quality? And then you know what? I could pay less. Yeah, and that's, that's that type of thinking uh, about sacrificing quality that's given us genetically modified organisms and contains bioengineered food ingredients and every other thing that they've decided to put rocks or chemicals into the food because it's cheaper than actual food. 
And uh, yeah, of course, of course, we need to, you know, that's that lower standard of living that we talk about week in and week out, right, Joe? Lower standard of living, be expecting it. You know, if, you, if people don't think that people are having trouble buying food, you know, Americans walking around, everyone's got food. Yeah, it's not really that bad. Even if you're, you're poor, you can go to the food shelter. But when the quality of food isn't of the level of food, that shows you that people really are kind of starving themselves, Joe. It just looks different than the uh, the depression. Yeah, it's just it's just a different look for the same thing. And and I just found that that interesting as they were talking about. Well, you know, you can go down the street and buy a burrito for less, right? But you know, the quality's not going to be there. But you know, of course, uh, I don't know if he was taking a shot at Chipotle or not, but. Uh, in any event, uh, that's what a lot of people are dealing with. This is what it does, right? It, you know, uh, it's just kind of like middle class now. Is the new middle class, let's just say, I don't know, you're in your 20s, your 30s. Is the new middle class going to be, well, I, I, I rent, right? But but I, I, I don't, but I'm not on government assistance. Is that going to be the new middle class, right? Is that going to define the, the 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 new middle class i rent my apartment i lease my car but i don't need food stamps and i don't need uh any type of government aid is that going to be the new middle class in america right i mean it sure kind of feels that way doesn't I, it i think the new middle class in the near future is going to be somebody that uh, can afford a, a starbucks coffee that's what i think that's what the middle class is going to end up being joe well, I mean, how much is that Sarko's coffee going to be, right? 800-951-0592. When we get back, we're going to go through all the data. Believable or not, I'm going to tell you what they said. Patriot Radio News Hour will be back. Eight hundred nine five one zero five nine two twenty twenty four. The year of chaos continues. March Madness, right? We got you got the tournament getting ready to kick off, and uh, March Madness uh, is definitely living up to the billing already. Uh, quick look here at the markets: the Dow is down sixty, the S and P's down ten, the Nasdaq's up ten. The ten year note. Wow, how fast! Things change. Four two nine. Uh, the ten year note skyrocketing on more inflation news today. Crude oil, and I told you here in Arizona, four dollar gas, three ninety nine. Okay, that's four dollars. Three ninety nine nine. I don't know why they got. Can we get rid of the nine and, and just you know get get to it? Three ninety nine and nine tenths, right? Yeah, okay. Uh, crude oil up another dollar and a half. Uh, Eighty-one dollars in change. Brent at eighty-five dollars in change. I don't need to tell you. Uh, not enough gasoline inventories to go around. Uh, gold right now down fifteen bucks, twenty-one sixty-five. We're going to give you a great opportunity uh, again today. Silver. Oh boy, silver's looking like it's getting ready. It's got that itch and it's getting ready to scratch it. Just under. Twenty-five dollars right now, uh, and and down two cents. So uh, silver's been f- going back and forth uh, between higher and, and lower today, uh, but looking very bullish uh, on the silver markets right now. And Jason, we, we've been saying it for a while now. If you if you still need to build wealth, right, you're going to have to be a lot more diversified for what comes after. The year of chaos. Uh, gold and silver need to be a huge part of that. Uh, we talk about uh, reaching out to Joey to help you uh, with your old uh, 401ks and IRAs. But why refi? You get up to 10.25% fixed rates of return. Uh, and, for, and it's such a great thing. You know, you think about how much uh, the banking industry, the Federal Reserve, gosh, we just need to end them in this horrible policy that they allowed to have the the student loan debt. First they made college cost a fortune. Then they told you you got to have your degree. Then they loaded you up on debt. Uh, And then, uh, you know, 60 days after you graduate, they put you in default because you didn't make your payments. It it really is insanity, but, but check these guys out. 
Uh, it's such a great thing. I know for a lot of people, they're like, oh, come on, you can't offer 10.25% fixed rates of return, no fees, I can turn my income on, I can turn it off, I can do it. Yes, believe me, call them and find out how it works. InvestYRefi.com if you want to look it up, but just call them, 888-YREFI-24. That's 888 888- why refi 24 so jason we had a a bunch of data out let's start with the one now that openly now people just go out on tv now say ah this number's not right jobless claims i don't know how this number can't be right right it's got to be one of the easiest either you filed for unemployment or you didn't right i mean it shouldn't be that hard and we know uh, record amounts of layoffs, right? February, outside of February of 2019, more planned layoffs ever for the month of February, according to Challenger Gray and Christmas. So here we are, the second week of March. So you, you would imagine that a lot of these people are like, okay, uh, I just got laid off. I got to go, go file. Apparently not. Uh, 209,000 dropping uh, from the previous week. Uh, There was some, I don't know, some really weird thing happening in New York uh, that made the numbers look this way. Who knows? I I don't know. Maybe maybe they're allowing all the illegal migrants in New York file for unemployment, and now they've gotten jobs. I don't know. Uh, Continuing claims, uh, they said those fell as well. Uh, which which was kind of an interesting thing that, that left most people scratching their heads. But, hey, that's what the data says, right? So, we you know, we just got to tell you what the government said. On the inflation front, this was producer prices. And this is, again, Jason and I have been telling you, they didn't fix inflation. They, 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 they took some natural downswings and, and, and called it progress. And, and now it looks like it's coming roaring back much hotter than expected. The headline, final demand for producer prices up six tenths of a percent. So that's big. Right, because you you know you, you think about now. I'm not saying that this is going to happen every month, but if it did, right, you're talking about over seven percent inflation, and this is for the producers, right? Well, what are the producers going to do? Well, they're just going to raise the price. I mean, of course they are. Uh, they were only expecting half of that. By the way, the hottest print going back to June. 2022 so jason as far as the producer said this was the highest headline number in in almost two years yeah first time jobless claims joe is this tricky like you know i keep pointing back to what's happened in the last couple years with uh, labor but think about it in in the the employer's stance you know all these companies are trying to do everything they can to you know to make the best Profit, you know, make them, you know, make make the uh, make it so they can pay all their employees, and uh, it's not very cost prohibitive to have to let someone go and then pay the uh, unemployment, right? So if you got one, you need to you need you need our job uh, hours to, to decrease because of I don't know lack of business. Are you going to cut two part time guys who have part time jobs somewhere else and not pay the unemployment, or are you going to cut the the full time employer employed guy and then have to pay the unemployment to that guy? I think it's kind of easy. I think that's why this, these numbers keep dragging on like this, Joe. It's like it's it's a game of musical chairs. A lot of irresponsibility with these jobs that have no loyalty to their workforce, and they probably are looking for guys that have multiple jobs because they're easier to let go. Yeah, it could be. I mean, but I'm saying, you know, I see all these layoffs. I mean, you had companies that just went out of business, a ton of them. Just laid off right. everybody. And a lot of these companies – aren't companies that I would normally associate with people working part-time. Maybe I'm wrong, right? Maybe all these companies now just have part-time workers. I, I, I don't know. It is interesting. Uh, on the on the inflation side, a big jump in energy costs. Gasoline was up 6.8%. Guess what? <laughs> That's nothing. Gas is flying here in Arizona. Uh, the largest increase in final demand... Uh, it like we said, you know, we're talking about going back almost two years. 
a seven, nearly 70% said the energy was a big issue for them. So you got to remember, these are producers, so factories, things, things that need a lot of power. And, and all, of the, all of the power companies in all of the states have been raising prices. And, of course, we, we keep telling you about it. Now we've got uh, problems with oil inventories again, right? It's never really gone away, even though we're producing 13. Listen, right now, we need to be making 15 million barrels a day, at least, and we could be. But we just choose not to, uh, and it's just ridiculous. I mean, right here we are in the United States, and you're telling me we can't get cheap power, J- Jason? Of course we could, but we rather have wind and solar and all these other things that are three times more. The only way you make stuff like that work, get energy prices so expensive. That eventually it's like, oh, okay, well, guess what? Hey, uh, wind and, and solar, they cost the same now. That's all they're doing, Jason. Competition drives prices down. What we need is more competition. We need another oil company to step up and it's like, you know what? Oil, we don't need that much. We, don't, we, we can produce more. We can cut the price, and it will immediately force other oil producers down. But this is uh, just like the banking system where they all lock arms together. You know, all the central banks, you know, all the big banks, they all work together. You know, oil is the same way. You know, if, if they want to cut production, keep prices higher, they're going to make their money. And uh, if we had a free market like some people pretend we have, then oil prices would come down. You know, if they're not going to produce more oil, that's because they don't want to produce more oil. And that means it's more expensive for us. We, you know, it's a rigged system. Once again, Joe, it's, it's, it's a, you know, how much freedom can you afford is what it turns into. You know, gas isn't expensive if you have... You know, a couple hundred million dollars laying around. Who cares if if gas is thirteen dollars a gallon, right? It won't matter to you because you keep making more than you're spending. But that's not what the the average guy slaves away, so that that guy uh, can can keep less competition with, in this case, oil. Yeah, there's no reason to be paying four dollars. I know, you know what? And I get jealous because Colorado's gas is cheap there. There, you guys, what are you guys? You guys paying like three bucks? Yeah, there's, right. well, I had I had that really competitive area there at the uh, truck stop. I think Jack told me it was two sixty one the other day, but right, I no, buy no, ethanol no, free. No. My ethanol free is uh, at two eighty five, so I, I buy a little bit more expensive. I I don't put GMO in my cars either, so <laughs> so yeah, I, well. I buy the ethanol free. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wholesale gas, by the way, in case you want to know, two dollars and seventy cents. But uh, anyway, uh, it's just. When you want the real thing, you got to pay for it. And last but not least, retail sales. Uh, they were expecting, now January was down seven tenths. They were expecting retail sales to bounce back and be up eight tenths of a percent. That didn't happen. Uh, retail sales were up six tenths of a percent, but not really. Uh, because they took January's down seven tenths and said, "Well, it was actually down 1.1 percent." So really, you know, when you think about it, uh, retail sales the way they were forecasting, we only had a two percent bump. But here's the reality: when you take out inflation for the tenth straight month in a row now, Jason, retail sales are down, right? Because you, you know. Obviously, with it, with with the prices, and again, you got to remember the inflation. They say it is. This is why when we sit there and we say, okay, well, why is Macy's closing 150 stores? Why is uh, you know, uh, Outback closing restaurants? Dollar, what was it? Dollar General. We're going to close a thousand stores uh, because here here's the reality. Even with the higher prices, people are actually buying less stuff. I mean, it's just really that that simple. The biggest contributor to the gains was motor vehicles and parts, while sales with clothing, personal health care, seeing declines. And that kind of tells you the plight of the consumer, doesn't it? Right? Hey, uh, I had to get my car fixed, or my car broke completely. And I gotta go. I buy it, whether it's a used car, new car, right? I gotta, I gotta get a car because I gotta go to work. 
but I'm going to have to cut back somewhere else. So I'm not going to buy clothes. I'm, I'm cutting back on the makeup, right? I'm cutting back on the beauty care. Uh, I think that really, th- th- at least for the, this number, the retail sales number, Jason, that seems to be a more accurate depiction of what's going on in America right now. Yeah, yeah. When, when you see it buying less, I definitely see that. That's that is a definite happening. You know, people are are not buying as much as they were buying before. Uh, you know, I, <laughs> I just uh, I just go to the grocery store and I can see it. It's a little different. Everything going on in there. It's 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 definitely a more frugal uh, consumer class right now, Joe. So uh, you you turn up the the flame of inflation and, and people have to pinch pennies. That's all there is to it. This is. This is why you got to stock up on things, you know, things of value like gold yep. and silver. You got to have that sitting yep. aside. Janet Yellen was out yesterday. And it's been interesting because she's been telling us all, oh, yeah, soft landing inflation's going to be right back down to two. Everything's great. We, we, we've got this. Well, yesterday, apparently. They don't got it. Janet Yellen going out on TV in a sit-down with Fox. Well, she's starting to express a, a little concern about inflation. But, Jason, don't worry. Don't worry. It's not stagflation. So it, you, don't you worry about it. I'll tell you about what she said next. 800-951-0592, Patriot Radio News Hour, Joe and Jason, on this Thursday. Uh, we've got a, a, a small pullback, uh, again, as inflation data uh, coming in. Uh, well, I don't, you know, I guess hotter than they expected, not hotter than uh, Jason or I. We've been telling you this uh, for how long. Uh, Janet Yellen was on TV yesterday, of course, uh, trying to convince everybody that what what is actually happening isn't happening, right? Because we know, we see it. I wonder how many people in Arizona right now, now that I said gas back to four dollars, are looking at the gas station today, saying, "What the heck just happened?" I mean, it, it jumped thirty cents in a single day. Yesterday it was three sixty nine. Today it's three ninety nine. But in her appearance, she wanted everybody to know. Now, now listen, her whole story's been everything's going to be great. Soft landing. Inflation's going back to 2%. Now, all of a sudden, well, I don't think we're going to see stagflation. Oh, really? Just that alone right there, Jason, tells me this is what we're in for. Right? Because why would she even mention stagflation? If what she's been saying for the last year and a half it, 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 is, is on the mark. Most forecasters believe we're on a path where inflation will come down. What forecaster is she talking about? That's what I'm <laughs> Who are these people? But the, the forecasters that uh, report to you that whose job it is to tell you how great you are? She says, here's the big thing, ready? This is what's going to save all of us, according, according to Janet Yellen. The cost of rental housing, that, that's going to be the key. So she is predicting that somehow, miraculously, Jason, you're going to be able to sign a lower lease. I, I don't know how that happens, but she says it's going to. There's got to be something that, that that would lead to such an event, right, Joe? I mean, uh, right. I, I've seen, what, what, I've seen right, rental what, prices what, going up. How, how does that happen? Right? M- magically? Right? She, she's just going to pull, pull the rental price reduction ferry out of her backside? And everybody's just going to start paying less? I, You know what? I know. I know what's going to happen. I know. All of the major landlords in the United States, because that's the one, you know, let's face it, they they own all these apartment complexes all over the place. They're just going to tear up your existing leases. They're just going to tear them right up. And they're going to have you give you a new lease 
that you're going to pay less on. I'm sure that's what she. That, that must be what's going to happen. Yeah, yeah that's and then not the part, <laughs> that's, apartment. Let me tell you when apart- that's going to happen. Never, never is when that yeah. will happen. The, the rates of occupancy in, in apartments is probably going up. I mean, there's, I mean, people that can't uh, pay their low interest loans that they got into, they're moving out, and a lot of these uh, people are going into lower rent apartments. You know, so I, I don't, I don't see how the rents could go lower on the apartments. That's that's probably going to be a hot market here for if you're if you're an owner of those properties, Joe. And you're kind of waiting for all the commercial to crash, and you're kind of waiting for uh, people to not be able to hold on to their three percent mortgages, and uh, you're waiting for them to come into your you know, 3,000-unit apartment megaplex, right? So I, I don't right. see how that makes rent go down. I don't see that happen. Well, I, I want to ask all of our listeners, because according to them, inflation has been hovering, over, you know, somewhere between, let's, talk, well, let's call it 3 to 4% for, like, the last nine months. But you look at the inflation data, it started in January. I just, this week, we just gave you February's inflation data, which all say, hey, not only is it not, it's kind of done going down, it's it's going to tick back up. Now, is it going to go back to nine? Probably not. At least, I hope, gosh, I hope not. But... How long do we have to go before they say, okay, well, you know what? We got stagflation, right? Inflation's pretty much, you know, around 4% every month, month after month after month. I mean, you know, we're coming up on almost a year of this. I mean, how much longer do we? It it reminds me of when they try to convince us that inflation was just transitory. Remember, they went a whole year with transitory it feels like the same thing over again but now instead of transitory inflation we're talking about stagflation right which is essentially hey guess what you just get poorer because you're you're whatever you're getting paid it's not keeping up with inflation and it doesn't keep up with inflation month after month after month after month after month after month after month month. And how many people now fall into, it, it finally got me, right? Look at credit card debt, all-time record highs. You should see the people that are delinquent uh, in their credit card rates across the country. A good state, you're you know, only 15 or 16%. You see how many states are above 20% of the people are, are at least 30 days or more past due on a credit card bill. Jason, mm-hmm. and, and, and the problem every month, it's just going to get worse. Well, I mean, that would be the, the one case in which Janet Yellen could see lower rent is if people just start in mass, start, start being evicted from uh, houses and apartments that they can no longer afford to pay for. Uh, if, if she here's the thing, she, she could be very sneaky. You know, they get they get up to the minute numbers, and a lot of these uh, these big market guys they're they're starting to show a lot more fear in the last few weeks here than they have re, uh, previous year. So, if she's seeing a uh, numbers that are dramatically worse, and people are now being kicked out of their homes and their apartments, okay, then maybe the rents will go down, but uh, still people won't be able to afford them. But that's the one case where she's right. You know, maybe she's trying to be uh, Mrs. Prediction, and and, and she, I'm well, sure she has, has she's privy to the numbers, Joe. I'm sure she has. You, you, she doesn't have lagging numbers like we a, have. Right. You're bringing up a great point, and I've said it all along. How many years in a row have I said it? I know when inflation's going to end. I know exactly when it's going to end. When everyone loses their jobs and the market crashes, we live in boom and bust. You're you're exactly right. This is this is where we are at, whether you want to accept it or not. That's the, the realities that we're seeing on the ground, and what we're seeing play out is it, it is just that. Now, here's another thing that I think I'll talk about when we get back. Why I think Janet Yellen is is telling us a, a little fib. 
uh, because uh, I don't see apartment. Uh, all of a sudden, there's all these empty apartments across America. I'm not buying it. I'll tell you why when we get back. 800-951-0592. Joe and Jason, Patriot Radio News Hour on this Thursday. I've got a great, very, very limited gold special and a really good silver special coming up. But first, I, I just want to throw this out there. It's Janet Yellen right? Is housing costs miraculously going to go down just for no reason, just because, just because? And, and don't worry, it's not going to be because what Jason and I were just talking about. Not going to be because people get laid off and can't afford it and, and nobody can afford the rent and now the, the landlord's got to lower the price. No. Let me ask you this. The three to four million people coming across the border every year. Think about this. Two Phoenixes a year. And Phoenix is what? I think we're the fifth largest city in the country. Two a year. Where are all these people living? Right? They're not buying houses. The government's putting them up in apartments. Right? The, the government's taking empty hotels, throwing them in there, right there. And, and now be, if you seek asylum, you can get a work permit. Uh, listen, this is just a fantasy to me. All the low-end housing is going to be gobble, gobbled up by these people. Uh, there's going to be uh, – and why there's extreme competition. You used to be able – hey, if you want to stay in the crappiest part of town, maybe it's a little rougher – Right, you kind of don't make eye contact with your neighbor type thing. Right, actually, they do that in the rich neighborhoods too. Uh, so don't feel like that's unique, right? But it used to be cheap. Not anymore. Not anymore. I'm going to tell you right now. Uh, the, the, I, I, this is my personal opinion. That's she's telling you a bald faced lie. Inflation is not going back to two percent. We're not going to have a soft land. It eventually does. When the whole thing crashes, Jason, that's when you're going to see uh, the inflation come back down, period. I mean, that, that's, that's it. That's correct, Joe. You're going you're gonna to see uh, those conditions uh, happen, and then, that, then prices can come down. But uh, that, you know, that's, that's one of these other things, Joe, I talked about, about keeping rates high and then and, and printing money comes in. I we might we might see prices not come down during a crash. I I bet everything was crashing in Weimar Germany, right? I bet there was no jobs. People had trouble paying for houses, and you had you had runaway inflation, and and everything was crashing around it. We're we're heading to something more like that, Joe. I don't know if it's going to be Weimar Republic. I don't know how much hyperinflation, but they don't have control over this thing. And and I see high rates with printing. I remember when I first mentioned that to you. I think it was a year and a half, or maybe even two years ago. And you're like, you know, you, you, I could tell you were humoring me, but you, you thought how crazy that is to have money printing and higher rates. But that's to me obvious where we're headed. They want to inflate their way out yeah. of this, and they can't lower the rates. Normally, so it's I, supposed to be at least the, the quantitative easing that we know is always bring rates to zero and then print. Right. Yep. That may not be the case this time around. Uh, Listen, be diversified, I keep telling you. Uh, right now, okay, so here we go. I've got 30. And believe me, I only have 30. I wish I had more, but I have 30. These are $20 St. Gaudens. So the St. Gaudens, they're the newer ones, 1908 to 1933. Um, they were Teddy Roosevelt changed the design of the coins, didn't think the liberties were majestic enough because America was a power now. So he commissioned a guy named Augustus St. Gaudens to create a new coin design. It's the, the, the full-bodied walking lady liberty, kind of the same, the same design that we use on the front of the Silver Eagles now. Augustus St. Gaudens happened to die uh, right before the coins came out, so they named it after him. That's why they're called uh, the St. Gaudens. 
a lot of people say, oh, they're, they're just prettier. Uh, so there, there's always, at the low end, there's always a lot less Saints uh, available uh, and then when you get to the higher end, right, the Liberties get really expensive because there's, a, you know, so much less of them uh, that were minted. But the $20 Saints, I have 30 of them. You're going to save uh, $15 a coin, $2,350, and I only have 30. You can call, you can buy all 30, you can buy one, uh, five, ten, whatever you want at 2350 on the silver side of things. Silver Eagle premiums starting to rise again here. I mean, obviously, we're nowhere near where we were with COVID, but half dollar silver pre 1965 silver half dollars one to 24 rolls at 215 dollars if you buy 24 roll, or 25 rolls or more same cost as buying dimes and quarters at 210 dollars on on the pre 1965 silver half dollars just Great value there because, you know, silver half dollars, there were times uh, during COVID, believe it or not, half dollar premiums were just as high as Silver Eagle premiums. It was it was insanity. Uh, when you talk about the utility silver, uh, the half dollars always has the big premiums on it. You're going to be able to buy silver half dollars, Jason. Same thing you can buy dimes and quarters for today. So we got two great specials for you. 800 951 We only have 30 of the St. Gaudens. Uh, we have several hundred rolls, about 300 rolls of the silver half dollars available. 800 951 Final segment coming up. 800-951-0592. Final segment here. $20 Saints. Uh, we've got two lines open. They just they just filled in here. So whatever we have, we had 30 of the $20 Saint Gaudens. They're $2,350. And then on the silver side, the rolls of silver half dollars. Uh, $215 by 25 rolls or more. And you pick those up for $210. Jason, it, it couldn't have been like three weeks ago. I think we ran silver half dollars for like 180 bucks a roll or 190 bucks a roll, something something crazy like that. When you know, that, of course, that was back. That was three ounces in silver ago. Uh, so it, it, it's just one of these things when, especially when I'm looking at silver here, it just looks like we'll see. Silver gets above $25. I think we're going to see uh, silver uh, go ahead, go ahead and jump up a few more dollars. Kind of, you know, making new highs here in silver. We expect silver to do very, very well this year uh, along with gold. And it just feels like, you know, all, all of a sudden now, uh, feels like silver may be getting a little mojo. Yeah, you know, there is another 90% silver coin that, that uh, they used to make that uh, people used to buy, and that was the silver dollar. You know, and look at the premiums on those. The, the premiums of those are, are in, in more of a, a, a numismatic value. A half dollars are following that trend. Uh, they're just bought up. They're being hoarded by guys that love these specific coins, and they don't make these every year like Silver Eagles. And so there's a, there's an, an extra premium to them. So when you can get them cheap, it's it's highly advisable to just scoop these up because uh, at some point the silver half dollars will be something we just take off the website because the premiums are more like silver dollars, and then we'll sell them when they're cheap and they come in cheap. And that means that uh, silver quarters will be on the clock after that. And uh, at some point, 90% uh, silver, Joe, is just going to have higher premiums because, you know, generations of people that are going to buy these things later, they're going to think they're so cool because, oh, look at those 100-year-old coins. Look at those 110-year-old coins, you know, because that's where they're headed, you know. You know, that's, that's you know, 1932 is when the Washington Quarter first came, and we're not too far away from the 100-year anniversary of the Washington Quarter. So uh, people buy these up because old silver just has a, an allure to it, and, you know, it's government silver, right, Joe? Yeah, that, that's the part that, uh, you know, buying – uh, government hallmark 
uh, always is uh, when you can do it in an affordable manner. It's always a, a, the best way, at least for at least in my opinion, the best way to buy uh, your metals. Uh, it, always, uh, U.S. government hallmark the, the, is the best way uh, to, to procure uh, your gold and silver. Uh, the twenty dollars St. Gaudens, right? You know, coming up, man. We're, we're ninety plus years in now. Right, uh, and of course, there's only a couple of 1933s that even exist. Uh, here we are in uh, 2024. Uh, the vast majority now of the St. Gaudens have, have uh, you know, are over a uh, hundred years old. And to Jason's point, there's just less and less of them every year. Uh, and, and people get it. More and more people. I think every year, more and more people figure out. Hey, I need to start owning some gold and silver. If you're brand new, if you've been listening for a while, you need to you need to start doing it. It is so easy. There's nothing complicated about it at all. Just call the 800 number. Tell the girls I want the special. Today we've got a couple of them. Tell them which one you want. You may want some of both. You may want the Saints. You may want the half dollars. Uh, we're going to ask you one hard question. How many would you like? And then don't worry. We don't harass you. We don't make outbound phone calls. We're not bothering you at dinner or any, any really. We're not bothering you ever. 800-951-0592. Jason and I, we're going to be right back with the half-inch. 